In the spiritual journey as Christ's followers, our acts of worship and praise serve as a profound reflection of God's character and love. This isn't simply about singing hymns or bowing heads in prayer. It's an intimate dance of divine love, a reciprocal interaction that mirrors the limitless character of God himself. It is not merely worshiping as a part of our religious routine, but rather as a fundamental part of our very identity. Why, you may ask, because we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are God's special people entrusted with the sacred mission of proclaiming His praises, as beautifully stated in 1 Peter 2, 9. We were summoned out of the darkness and into His marvelous light, not to stand idly, but to illuminate the world with the love and character of God that resides within us. But to step into this calling, we must understand the central role of worship and praise in our spiritual journey. It's a divine connection, an intimate dialogue with God where we express our deepest love, adoration, and reverence. It's a humbling act of acknowledging God's sovereignty, His majesty, and His supreme authority over the cosmos. Worship is our spiritual nourishment and the lifeblood for our growth in faith. It's in the silence of prayer and in the meditative reading of His Word that we find our relationship with God deepening and our souls being refined through a time of self-reflection, repentance, and seeking His guidance. But the beauty of worship doesn't stop at personal transformation. When we come together to worship, we're knitting the fabric of our community tighter. We're fostering unity, shared purpose, and a sense of belonging. We're supporting and encouraging each other, which strengthens the bonds of our spiritual family. Indeed, every act of worship and praise is an echo of our faith, a testimony of God's goodness, mercy, and love. It's our heartfelt response to His boundless love, grace, and mercy, and a grateful acknowledgement of the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. As we strive to emulate Jesus, we place worship at the very center of our lives, following His example of unwavering devotion to God the Father. Paul's exhortation in Ephesians 5, 1-2 propels us even further, encouraging us to imitate God and to walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us. Our worship and praise should be a mirror reflecting God's character, particularly His unfathomable love and sacrificial nature. So let us step forward, dear believers, into this divine dance of worship. It's not merely an act of ritual or duty, but an expression of our very identity, a demonstration of love, and a vibrant means of reflecting God's character and glory. Let's use our voices, our actions, our lives to proclaim His praises and love, to paint a picture of His character for the world to see. Because worship, in its truest form, is a lifestyle, a way of living that acknowledges God's presence in every aspect of life. It's the key to a deep, personal relationship with God, and it's the beacon of light that we're called to shine into the world. Let's embrace this call wholeheartedly. In our journey of understanding worship and praise, we first need to grasp their definitions and their biblical context. When we speak of worship, we talk about the act of showing deep reverence and adoration for God. It's an act of total surrender, a submission to God's divine authority and majesty, not confined to the four walls of a church or a specific day of the week. Worship is our lifestyle. It's in our thoughts, words, and actions that glorify God. It's in our willingness to be living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, as Romans 12, 1 encourages us. Praise, while closely related to worship, zeroes in on expressing gratitude for God's actions, attributes, and promises. It's our joyful songs, our heart-touched tears, our spoken and unspoken words that glorify and exalt God. It's our active celebration of God's goodness and faithfulness, just as the psalmist proclaimed in Psalm 71, 14. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. Worship and praise are not just ritualistic observances. They are transformative practices that shape the believer's life. These practices foster a personal relationship with God, paving the way for spiritual growth and transformation. They allow us to express our faith, cultivate a lifestyle of humility and gratitude, and build a stronger sense of community. They open up healing and restoration and help us align with God's will. Now, let's take a moment to ponder on 1 Peter 2, 9. It states, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This verse beautifully encapsulates the believer's identity and the role of worship and praise in our lives. We, as believers, are chosen, set apart to stand before God, offering praises instead of animal sacrifices. 
As God's special people, we have the privilege and responsibility to engage in regular worship and praise. Our ultimate purpose is to proclaim God's praises, to acknowledge His character, recount His deeds, and declare His goodness and mercy, not just for our edification, but as a testament to the world of God's transformative work in our lives. We are called out of darkness into His marvelous light, and this transformation is a fundamental reason for our worship and praise, a response of gratitude for God's saving grace. In essence, worship and praise form the heartbeat of a believer's life. They are the lifeline that connects us to God, facilitating our spiritual growth, community building, personal transformation, and alignment with God's will. Worship and praise are not just practices, they are our lifestyle that reflects our love, faith, and commitment to God. So, let us continue to worship in truth and spirit and praise unceasingly, proclaiming the wonders of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Our worship should ring with the truth of God's sovereignty, acknowledging His reign over all creation, mirroring the divine authority and control that He holds. We bow before His majesty, singing, for the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. But let's not forget that the heart of worship is love, a profound, immeasurable, and unconditional love that is a response to the love that God has showered upon us. Our worship, therefore, should not only be a declaration of our love for God, but also a demonstration of that love to those around us. As we recount the deeds of our God, we are struck by His faithfulness. He is consistent, reliable, and trustworthy. Our worship should tell the story of His faithfulness, not just to us, but to all generations. We also worship in response to God's grace and mercy. We are undeserving, yet He forgives us. We are flawed, yet He blesses us abundantly. Such recognition and response are beautiful reflections of God's merciful nature in our worship. Remember, our God is both infinitely above us and intimately close to us. Our worship should echo this incredible balance, revealing a God who is both majestic and accessible, both transcendent and inherent. Ephesians 5, 1-2 calls us to be imitators of God. Just like a child imitates their parents, we, as beloved children of God, are to model our lives after Him. And how do we do that? by walking in love, a love that is active, self-sacrificing, and mirrors the love of Christ. This love isn't limited to words or feelings, it's about actions. It's about giving, serving, and sacrificing for the benefit of others. It's about making our lives a fragrant offering to God. As we live out this love, our very lives become a form of worship, pleasing to God and reflective of His character. So, how can we reflect God's character in our worship? First and foremost, by worshiping in spirit and truth. This means going beyond rituals to connect with God authentically and recognizing Him for who He truly is. Next, we must strive to reflect God's holiness in our lives. To repent of our sins, to pursue righteousness, to live a life that is set apart for God. We must also show God's love, not just in our relationship with Him, but also in our relationship with others. Our worship should be marked by acts of kindness, forgiveness, and service, all of which demonstrate God's love to the world. Our worship should also display God's grace. Just as we have received grace from God, we should extend that grace to others. We should practice humility, recognizing our dependence on God, submitting to His will, and serving others. We should cultivate faithfulness, trusting God in all circumstances, and demonstrating an unwavering commitment to Him. Remember, our worship should also be marked by joy, the joy that comes from being in God's presence. This joy isn't dependent on our circumstances but flows from our relationship with God. Finally, our worship should demonstrate patience, trusting in God's timing, and persevering in faith. Dear friends, worship is a mirror of God's character. It's an opportunity to reflect His attributes and nature back to Him and to the world around us. As we engage in worship, we not only deepen our relationship with God, but also give the world a glimpse of who He is. True worship, my friends, involves aligning our hearts, minds, and actions with God's attributes. It involves acknowledging His holiness, sovereignty, love, faithfulness, grace, mercy, transcendence, and inherency. It involves living a life that mirrors these divine attributes. But let us not forget, worship is not a one-time act. It's not just about what we do on a Sunday morning. It's a lifestyle. It's about how we live every day. It's about how we interact with others. It's about our actions, our attitudes, and our character. Therefore, let us strive to live lives that reflect God's character. Let us strive to make our worship a true reflection of who God is. Let our lives be a testament to His holiness, His love, His grace, His mercy, His faithfulness. 
Let us truly become imitators of God, living lives of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Let us remember, worship is more than a sign, more than a prayer. It's a life lived in imitation of God, a life that reflects his character, a life that mirrors his love. So let us strive to live such lives, not just on Sundays, but every day of our lives. Because that, my dear friends, is true worship. That is how we can best honor God and reflect his character to the world. Unravel the threads of existence, and you'll find woven into every strand the pulsating heartbeat of God's love. This love, overwhelming, never-ending, all-encompassing, is the great symphony that fills the universe, inviting us to join in its chorus. It's the sublime foundation of our relationship with God, shaping every aspect of our faith. And it's in our worship that we discover the unique opportunity to become instruments of this love, reflecting its melody back to Him and resonating it throughout the world. Our worship, you see, is a love story. It's a sacred dance between the divine lover and his beloved children. It's an echo of the heartbeat of God, reverberating in the chambers of our own hearts. In 1 John 4, 19, we find the rhythm of this dance. We love because he first loved us. His love initiates the dance, stirs our hearts, and moves our feet, leading us into a waltz of adoration and praise. Worship is more than an emotional response. It's a reflection of God's active, self-giving love, a mirror held up to the world, reflecting the sacrificial love of Jesus on the cross. As we sing songs about the cross, partake in the Lord's Supper, and share testimonies, we amplify the whispers of God's love in our lives, sending them echoing into the hearts of others. But this dance isn't merely vertical, reaching up towards heaven. It extends horizontally, touching the lives of those around us. Following the rhythm of Matthew 22, 37 to 39, we understand that our worship becomes a tangible reflection of God's character as it overflows into acts of love, kindness, and service. It's a love that transforms our gifts and talents into tools for blessing others in our communities and our churches. God's love, remember, is unconditional. He loves us not for what we do or who we are, but for who He is. When we worship, we can reflect this powerful truth by demonstrating grace, forgiveness, and acceptance. In a world that often conditions love on performance, our worship stands as a beacon of God's unchanging, unfailing love. Our worship doesn't end there. It serves as a call, an invitation for others to taste and see the love of God. Through our songs, prayers, testimonies, and acts of service, we become conduits of His love, drawing others into a life-changing relationship with Him. Ephesians 5, 1-2 paints a vivid picture of how our worship can reflect God's love. It challenges us to become imitators of God, inviting us to let His love transform every corner of our lives until we reflect His character. It calls us to walk in love, making love our lifestyle, and turning our lives into a constant act of worship. It points us to the gold standard of love, Christ's selfless, sacrificial love. As we strive to mirror this love, our lives become a fragrant offering to God, a pleasing aroma that permeates the world around us. So how do we make this journey? How do we make our worship a true reflection of God's love? Begin by focusing on God's love in your worship songs. Choose songs that speak of His love and inspire us to love Him more. Share testimonies of God's love, allowing your story to magnify His love and encourage others. Make your prayers expressions of love, interceding for others and expressing gratitude for God's love. Practice love during communal worship, demonstrating kindness, forgiveness, and seeking reconciliation and unity. Immerse yourself in scriptures that resonate with God's love, letting them shape your worship and deepen your understanding of His character. Look for opportunities to serve others, both within your church and in your community. As Christ showed His love through service, you too can reflect His love in this way. Above all, cultivate a loving attitude. This is the fertile soil in which love-infused worship thrives. It involves having a heart that is open and responsive to God's love, a mind that meditates on His love, and a will that seeks to express His love through actions. Let love be the cornerstone of your worship guiding your actions, molding your character, and transforming your life. As we consciously and intentionally incorporate these practices into our worship, we become living reflections of God's love, amplifying His symphony of love and inviting others to join in the dance. Our worship, thus, becomes a beautiful act of reciprocating God's love, a testament to His overwhelming, never-ending, all-encompassing love. In a world starved of genuine love, let our worship stand as a beacon, illuminating the path to the one who is love himself. 
And as we journey on, may our steps ever echo the rhythm of his love, a rhythm that whispers in every heartbeat, in every breath, in every act of worship. We love because he first loved us. As believers in Christ, we are graced with an extraordinary identity. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. This divine identity, as outlined in 1 Peter 2, 9, isn't merely a set of lofty titles. It is an empowering call to action, an invitation to live out our faith in a transformative way. We are a chosen race, not by our works, but by God's boundless grace. It's a choice rooted in His love, a choice that signals our unique position in His divine family. This realization should ignite in us an overwhelming sense of gratitude, inspiring heartfelt worship and praise. We're chosen not because we're worthy, but because God is merciful. Our worship, then, becomes a humble acknowledgement of our dependence on Him and a bold declaration of His goodness. As a royal priesthood, we are given both the honor and the responsibility of serving God and interceding for others. We are royal because through Christ, we are children of the King of Kings. We are priests called to mediate between God and His people. We are entrusted with the divine mandate to reflect His love and grace to the world. This dual role empowers us to influence the world for God's kingdom, yet also calls us to lead lives of humility and devotion. We are a holy nation set apart for God's divine purposes. We are called to live lives of righteousness that distinctly set us apart from the world's norms and values. Our lives should radiate God's character, serving as beacons of light in a world often consumed by darkness. We are a testament to the transformative power of God's grace, and our lives should boldly proclaim His excellencies. As a people for His own possession, we are dearly loved and valued by God. This relationship with God is intimate and profound, instilling in us a sense of worth and dignity that surpasses worldly standards. We are His treasured possession, and as such, we are called to live lives that reflect His love and glory. Our identity in Christ should propel us towards authentic worship, a worship that is a response to God's overwhelming love for us. As we embrace these identities, we come to understand the significant role of reflective worship within the church and the broader community. Reflective worship serves to build up the body of Christ, strengthening our faith and promoting unity. It stands as a beacon of God's love, inviting others to witness His transformative power. Reflective worship also inspires us to serve others in our community, embodying the values of justice, mercy, and love. It cultivates a culture of acceptance, forgiveness, and grace, serving as an antidote to the division and strife in our world today. In essence, our divine calling, as painted in 1 Peter 2, 9, is to live out our faith in a way that loudly proclaims God's excellence. We are chosen, royal, holy, and treasured. And as we embody these identities in our worship and in our lives, we become agents of God's love, grace, and truth. Let's boldly step into this identity, using our lives to glorify God and bless those around us. Let's shine brightly in the darkness, proclaiming the excellencies of Him who called us into His marvelous light. As we journey through the intricate dance of faith, we are drawn to worship, our hearts responding to the divine call. This response becomes the compass guiding us, the star we align ourselves with. We become pilgrims, embarking on a journey of transformative worship. A journey where we experience not just the joy of the destination, but the profound beauty of the journey itself, the practice of reflective worship. Reflective worship, my friends, is a divine encounter, an intimate, profound experience that transcends the ordinary and takes us to the heart of the divine. As we soak in this practice, we find ourselves transformed, molded, and shaped into the likeness of Christ. We find ourselves drawn deeper into the heart of God, growing in our knowledge of Him. We discover the tender intimacies of His love, the depths of His grace, and the steadfastness of His character. And as we do, we cultivate hearts that overflow with gratitude, appreciating His daily mercies, His bountiful provision, and His ceaseless love. This process of reflection, of worship, does more than merely change us, it grows us. We become aware of the stark contrast between God's holiness and our frail humanity, and this realization births a humility within us, a humility that invites God's sanctification. We begin to align our thoughts, our words, and our actions with God's heart, striving each day to become more like Christ. The storms of life may rage, but reflective worship becomes our anchor, a beacon of hope that nurtures resilience within us. We remember God's faithfulness in our past, reassuring us of His promises for our future. We become warriors, braving life's storms with a song of hope on our lips and an unwavering faith in our hearts. 
Reflective worship does not stop at personal transformation. It is a spiritual discipline that ripples out, affecting our relationships and our community. We find our hearts softened, our understanding deepened, our empathy expanded. We reach out to others, extending God's grace, forgiveness, and love. We become bridges, connecting hearts and fostering a sense of community. In the collective worship within the church, reflective worship serves as a bedrock, a lighthouse guiding the congregation towards spiritual growth. It strengthens us, unites us, and encourages us. But it does not stop within the walls of the church. It extends out into the community, into the world. We become living testimonies, reflecting God's transformative power in our lives. Worship, true worship, is a lifestyle. It goes beyond songs and rituals. It is about serving others, extending kindness, striving for justice, and showing mercy. It is about embodying God's love in every aspect of our lives. As we engage in reflective worship, we are not just growing, we are positively impacting those around us. Reflective worship is not merely a discipline, it is a divine encounter, a transformative journey. It deepens our relationship with God, fosters personal growth, shapes our relationships, and impacts our communities. It is more than a personal spiritual practice, it is a collective tool for blessing and transformation. So let's embark on this journey together, growing, changing, impacting, and reflecting God's glory in our lives and our communities. The journey of reflective worship is a journey of transformation, a beacon guiding us through our spiritual growth. It serves as a cornerstone, anchoring us in the ebb and flow of life, aligning our inner compass with the true north of our Creator. This practice does not merely change us, it redefines us, revealing the profound impact it has on our personal transformation, our relationships, and our role within the church and the broader community. Think of reflective worship as a divine encounter, a transformative experience that reshapes us from the inside out. It deepens our relationship with God, cultivates a grateful heart, fuels our spiritual growth, fosters resilience, and, most importantly, it aligns our actions with God's will. As we walk this journey, let's embrace it with open hearts and allow it to mold us into the likeness of Christ. Reflective worship, though personal, is not solitary. It impacts our relationships, fostering a deeper self-awareness, empathy, unity, and a lifestyle of love and service. It bridges the gap between our souls and the divine, intertwining us with the fabric of humanity. It is a divine rhythm that pulsates through our relationships, enriching our bonds with each other, encouraging us to live authentically, love deeply, and serve selflessly. Within the church and community, reflective worship acts as a catalyst, propelling us forward, amplifying our faith, and uniting us as one body under Christ. It echoes in the walls of our churches and spills over into our communities. As we live out our faith in love and service, we become living testimonies of God's transformative power, beacons of hope in a world starved of light. Embrace the discipline of reflective worship. Seek the quiet, listen to the whispers of God, and let His love envelop you. Anticipate a deeper understanding of His character, a transformation in your spiritual journey, richer relationships, and a marked influence in your community. Reflective worship is not just a spiritual exercise, it's a life-changing encounter with God. It's a journey into the heart of the divine, a passage leading us into a deeper understanding of His character, His love, His grace, and His mercy. As we echo the celestial chorus of praise and surrender ourselves in worship, we are immersed in a love so profound that it transforms us, shaping us into the reflection of His divine image. Finally, remember that the power of reflective worship transcends our human abilities. It's a mirror held up to God's character and love, a divine echo resonating through the heavens. Let this reflection guide us, let it inspire us, let it empower us to live out God's love in our world. And as we continue to embrace the divine encounter of reflective worship, may our lives shine brightly as reflections of His glory in a world desperate for His touch. This, my friends, is the promise, the power, and the profound impact of reflective worship. Embrace it, live it, and be transformed.